It's time to go back in time with the Disgaea series, but this time within familiar territory. Disgaea 4 A Promise Unforgotten is originally the fourth main entry of the Disgaea franchise and the second title that was on the PlayStation 3. With being a fan of the Disgaea franchise, I approached NIS America about reviewing the second return of this game. Disgaea 4 Complete Plus is the ultimate version of the game as it takes the original game, that game's DLC, and the Disgaea 4 A Promise Revisited on the Vita and compiles them into one game to be enjoyed on the Nintendo Switch. So let's not waste any more time, let's head into the netherworld once again for Disgaea 4 Complete Plus. There once was a powerful vampire tyrant that traveled across the human world and sucked the blood of those that feared him. However, after a promise that resulted in the loss of his fearsome power, he changed his path and became a printing instructor. The smart but silly printing instructor Vava Torres and his right hand steward werewolf, Fenric, work hard to keep their printies in line. How so? By ensuring that they follow the rules of being a printy. Remember, Printy rule number one, you shall always include the word dude in every line you say. At the end of their training, they will get a sardine as promised by Lord Valvatorez. However, after the final lesson occurs, the Corruptament, the militia commanded under the Netherworld's president, kidnaps the printies and plans to destroy them to decrease the printing population. But with Valvatorz's promise at stake, and with the amount of promises that he continues to make, this small-scale printing problem leads into a full-on political usurpation of the Netherworld. Along the way, you'll meet many faces, new and old. Fuka Kazamatsuri, a middle schooler that failed to fully become a printy after death and thinks that this entire adventure is all a dream. Desko, a monster that wishes to become a supreme final boss. Def Imizel, the son of the president and a rascal as seen by Valzi. And then there's Axel from Disgaea 2 who is now acting as a prison warden in Hades. There are lots of characters, playable and non-playable, that you'll encounter each chapter that will not only make the journey more intense in scale, but flavorful in comedy. It is absolutely unacceptable for you to deal lethal damage on your first turn! It completely ruins the balance of the game. I cannot approve of someone like you being the final boss. In fact, no one would approve of such a lousy game if it had that! As expected of my lord, that must be the most biased opinion I've ever heard. With the DLC not being available right from the start, like in Disgaea 5 Complete, and with the extra story content, from A Promise Revisited being towards the later part of the game, I didn't get to fully experience the complete plus aspect of the game. However, the amount of story I did experience was what I remember from the original version and is truly just as entertaining as it was then. Some jokes from the past now hit a bit harder than before, thus making the game a lot funnier, but there are also some downsides that I've realized in terms of the characters. Fuka constantly stating how she thinks this is a dream, gets annoying after a few chapters, and I don't remember finding a measles voice annoying before, but I do find it to be a tad bit annoying to hear now. However, overall, Disgaea 4's story is very comedic, silly, but intense in the normal Disgaea fashion that I really love. Those that are familiar with the standard Disgaea gameplay may already know what to expect, but I still got to go over it for the level 1's watching. Disgaea is a JSRPG, a Japanese strategic role-playing game. Each level will have its own layout with a goal of defeating all the enemies on the board, with it sometimes being mixed up for story reasons. In regards to the story, each chapter is set within a certain area and then there are several stages you'll have to complete before fighting the boss of that chapter and proceeding to the next chapter. While you'll have a growing team of main characters, you'll be able to create a new character amongst any of the available classes and customize them in terms of their equipment in any way you like. To continue with some of the Disgaea staples, each stage rewards you based upon how much you fill the bonus gauge. Defeating enemies will earn your character that dealt the killing blow some mana, which can then be used for senate hearings and more. The item world is still here from the first game, allowing you to level up any weapon and then make them more powerful by fighting through randomized stages. While these are Disgaea staples nowadays, I'll address some mechanics separately from the norm this time around. Originating from Disgaea 2 Dark Hero Days, Magic Change Returns. Magic Change allows a monster class to transform into a specific type of weapon in order to be used by a humanoid unit. For example, Cat Sabers turn into guns, but Desko can Magic Change into a sword. Magic Change is also expanded for Disgaea 4 specifically through fusion. If two monsters of the same class fuse, they become an even bigger monster. In addition, a Mega Monster can also Magic Change to become a Mega Weapon. Evilities from Disgaea 3 are back. These are abilities that you can learn at the Evility Shop 
by spending mana. While each unique character has a special ability unique to them, you can customize what abilities you have equipped to prevent a character from taking less damage from fire elemental attacks and things of that sort. Ability shops are also the place to power up your skills outside of just leveling them up from constantly using them. Most important to fitting into the political theme of Disgaea 4 is the Campaign HQ. Here you can set your characters onto a map like Grid and the closer characters are to one another, the better they work in team attacks. However, through placing evil symbols on the map, those within the specific layout of the evil symbol will gain special abilities or effects. Some evil symbols will allow those near it to gain more EXP in battle, or for a support attack to react if two allies are near the same target enemy. There are a lot of elements that build this Gaia 4 into a very strategic game, and while setting these up and even just arranging your character's equipment can be a bit annoying, it all makes the game fun in the long run. That goes for having to travel through the item world as there will definitely be times where you need to grind in order to close a level gap. However, with the cheat shop returning from the Sky Dimension 2, you can increase the percentage of EXP, mana, and hell gained and also the strength of enemies to make the process of grinding even faster. Like always, head to the top and become the best overlord you can and reach level 9999. There really isn't too much to say in regards to Disgaea's presentation because Disgaea games, while all somewhat different in aesthetic, they do all look really great. However, sometimes Disgaea 4 doesn't fully dive into conveying a more political atmosphere when it's time to get down to battles. The character classes are all the Disgaea standard with some little tweaks here and there in terms of their designs, but I think I would like to see variations of designs that are meant to cater to the aesthetic being presented. Maybe have some humanoid classes wear more snazzier attire, or maybe have some of the monster classes be somehow dabbed up in suits. Takehito Harada, one of my many artistic influences, still provides some nice character designs. While he always does a great job with the main crew designs, not so much with Kilia, I really like the designs of the new Professor class and Android class. The HD quality sprites are still great as they were first introduced in Disgaea 4 on the PS3, but I wish I had the option to choose the SD style of sprites as in the original version of Disgaea 4. While I don't remember too many tracks from the game this time around, there are still some bangers coming from Tenpai Sato. I love the main theme, Last Engage, for how cool it sounds while also being a very romantic slash somber theme for Valzi's story. This game's version of You Go Girl is very cute and rhythmic while also accompanied by some silly vocals that accompany Fuka's character. The best track overall is definitely Sparkling. It is very soothing and melancholic with his violins, but the guitar really turns it into a very powerful and encouraging theme. Now I do want to address the title, Review Minus. I never got the chance to beat the original game after my PS3 broke, and after getting it repaired and losing all my save data, that opportunity has been shot further into the future. In addition, I asked NES America for a review copy kinda late, and with it being a JRPG and I'm still in school, I definitely haven't beaten this game, nor have I gotten the chance to truly reach the complete plus aspect. So when I return to Disgaea 4 and a possible future Disgaea retrospective, I'll give my full thoughts on every inch of this game and the rest of the main series. However, with what I have experienced, twice, I definitely say to give Disgaea 4 complete plus a purchase. While the $50 price tag may be a bit much with the PS3 original going for $20 now, having all the DLC, added story content from the Vita version, some aspects from Disgaea 5, and with it being on a portable console, I definitely think all of these things make the price worth it. And just a message to NES America, I love to see you guys bring Disgaea 2, my personal favorite game in the entire series, and Disgaea 3 to the Switch next. Thank you so much for watching, and check out our other videos and our links in the description down below. Always remember to return to the source.